Hello and welcome to creating concept maps for University of Nottingham medical students. My name is Chris Lewis Lloyd. I'm a doctor and co-director of clinical research fellow at Nottingham in the Queen's Medical Centre. So we're going to be looking at a concept map for rectal bleeding. So there's two approaches. We can use the anatomical roots or we can use a surgical sieve. So via anatomy, so bleeding per rectum, so rectal and anal causes. So a common would be hemorrhoids. So these are dilated and engorged anal cushions. And uh, these can either be non-painful or painful, depending on their position, either internally or externally. Uh, and they'll usually have some fresh red blood, sometimes after wiping, or you might, or patients might describe feeling a small lump uh, at their anus. Then we've got an anal fissure. These can be quite painful, uh, very exquisitely tender, and it's a crack in the, the anal canal uh, that's uh, usually brought about by hard stool or uh, profuse diarrhea and can actually itself lead to constipation as patients don't want to uh, pass stool. So it's usually pain and passing stool with very fresh red blood. Then we've got rectal cancer or anal cancer. And then there's proctitis. This can be inflammatory or sometimes radiation. So any patient that's had pelvic radiation for malignancy at some stage might develop this if they've still got their rectum. And then trauma. So uh, this may be apparent on sensitive questioning during the history. Then the colon. So a common one would be diverticulitis or diverticular disease. So uh, this is outpouchings of the bowel that become inflamed and can lead to pain and bleeding, as well as colonic cancer. We've got inflammatory bowel diseases such as Crohn's and ulcerative colitis, with uh, UC being mainly confined to the colon with some terminal ileitis or backwash ileitis. And then with Crohn's, the disease is uh, throughout the bowel. And so a common question might be in your exams, uh, a common hint would be that they've got mouth ulcers as well that more likely be related to Crohn's than you see. So then we've got other types of colitis, so indeterminate uh, inflammatory colitis, as well as ischemic conditions and septic colitis. Uh, polyps, neoplastic or congenital, and then ulcers of the lining of the colon. So a sterical ulcer is due to a uh, hard rock of feces that led to pressure erosion of the lining of the bowel. And then with trauma, so patients who've had a difficult colonoscopy, they might get some bruising on the lining of their bowel. Vascular conditions. So uh, any type of mesenteric infarction. So uh, in the same way that we have heart attacks and strokes, you can get infarction of your mesentery mesenteric vessels, so arterial venous malformations, uh, these can be hereditary, as well as aortoenteric fistulas, so that's a connecting trap between the aorta and the bowel. This is usually due to an inflammatory bowel process, which has led to the bowel sticking onto the vessel. As well as this, there are other causes, uh, particularly massive upper GI bleeds, and still present as uh, fresh red bleeding per rectum. And then within children, there's Meckel's diverticulum and interception, which is telescoping of the bowel into itself. So mainly a junction point for that is uh, the ileocecal valve. And then we've got hematological causes. So patients who are on warfarin for specific reasons, such as AF or heart valves, and as well as patients who are on, on DOAX or NOAX, that's the apixaban or Roxaban classes. So let's have a look at the surgical sieve. So this is an approach to differential diagnosis that's fairly structured and can be used for multiple different symptoms or conditions, which we'll go through in further concept maps. So for bleeding per rectum, so vascular causes, as we mentioned above, and then we've got infective and inflammatory causes with infective colitis. So the Campylobacter, E. coli, and C. diff, these are uh, usually with 
bloody diarrhea is the cause. You want trauma, autoimmune, metabolic, iatrogenic, neoplastic, congenital, degenerative, and functional. So with the functional, you can see there's diversion colitis. This is where patients who have had a defunctioning stoma and the distal portion can develop colitis and that can lead to some bleeding. And that is usually gained mainly from the history that they've had some form of operation for uh, defunctioning of their bowel. These are some other differential mnemonics that I've uh, come across. So we've got dripping arse and hand crack. So the first uh, point is to really establish is, do we think this is an upper GI cause? And this will usually be because uh, we want to know if it's melina or not. So melina is the partial uh, digestion of the blood with the feces and it's very off-putting smell and described as very dark and black tummy stool. And I'll uh, show an image of that in just one moment. But it's really to rule out, do we think this is an upper GI cause? And so we'll manage uh, the patient as if they're having an upper GI bleed. And so some of the upper GI causes for bleeds are listed below. So we've got uh, inflammatory conditions, ulcers, malignancies, and vascular disorders. So is it upper GI? And if it's not Melina, we'll talk about pain. So this is Melina, so you can really note it's very dark, black, tarry. Uh, so you'll be called many times when you're on the wards yeah, see, oh, I think we believe that they've got Melina, they've got Melina. And most of the time it isn't, but once you've seen it, you, you will recognise it, and that will be both by the smell and the sight of it. So you must remember it's very, very black and tarry. So is there pain? If there isn't pain, so let's move to special features. So usually angiodysplasia or AV malformations, so it's chronic bleeds, recurrent bleeds, and they generally tend to be elderly. And then if it's an asymptomatic child, so there's no pain, it's potentially a Meckel's diverticulum. If there is pain and it's perianally, so with anal fissures, there might be a skin tag, it might be, it'll be very fresh red, uh, it'll be on pain on defecation, and it's very exquisitely tender. They can very pinpoint it. And then with hemorrhoids, these, depending on their position, can be painful or not. So internal hemorrhoids, tend not to be painful, but those that are external or from bows, they can be quite painful as well. And they'll, they'll generally have bleeding after defecation, they might feel a slight lump, and there'll be pruritus, which, uh, so general itching or irritation of the region. So we've also got uh, abdominal pain, and we'll move into that in a second, but if there's no pain at all, they might have uh, radiation proctitis, so as we said before, so patients with pelvic malignancies, so rectal, prostate, or gynecological causes, if they've had radiotherapy to their pelvis, they can develop uh, proctitis, radiation proctitis after this. So those with abdominal pain. Still, we've got to exclude massive upper GI bleeding causes. So that would tend to be patients with hematemesis, so vomiting blood, so if they've got epigastric pain. So you just have to have in the back of your mind that is this actually an upper GI problem and therefore you're going to go down a different uh, route of investigations so you might be doing an OGD instead. Uh, with mesenteric infarction, the general rule is they've uh, got a clot and so therefore they're usually either in AF or in your questions They'll probably be in the history of they've got a history of AF or they're currently in AF. They're usually fairly sick patients. There'll be generalized tenderness um, and they'll be shocked. So that's something to be aware of. With colorectal cancer, so it's your history of unexpected weight loss. There'll be a change in bowel habit, might be some bleeding or defecation. So the, uh, and patients tend to be Older, however, there is increasing colorectal cancer in younger patients. Um, 
uh, a common condition, diverticulitis. So this is where they usually describe a, a splash of uh, blood in the toilet pan. They might have a slight change in bowel habit. Uh, and because it's usually uh, in the sigmoid colon, they end up having left iliac phosphopane and they may have a fever because they do have uh, an infection going on. Inflammatory bowel and infective diseases. So this is mainly teased out in the history uh, with uh, infective disorders. Uh, they might have some bloody diarrhea uh, with the inflammatory conditions. There might be a acute on chronic kind of presentation getting worse, uh, uh, weight loss. They might have mouth ulcers and Crohn's and particularly if they might have arthropathy or there's, there's usually syndrome uh, related disorders, so uveitis and iritis. So ischemic colitis with, so with any arterial path, if they've got a history of arterial disease or ischemic heart disease, this is a potential condition that you might be one thinking about. And then in children mainly, so is interception. So the common question, the common uh, scenario is an infant with colicky abdominal pain, with a late presentation of red currant jelly stools. And then we've got trauma, which will be due well, down to the history. So how do we manage PR bleeds? So the first step is resuscitation and to do an A2E examination of acutely unwell patients. So within that, uh, depending on how unwell they are, we going to be citing cannulas and either giving fluids or more likely giving packed red cells for those who are fairly hemodynamically unstable. And the general rule is massive bleeds to those who have more than one and a half litres in a day. And uh, most of these stop. However, uh, we at least want to be doing some urgent imaging to see if we can pinpoint uh, a place for IR to embolize the bleeding such as doing a CT angiogram. And then the mild to moderate is less than one and a half litres a day. And these are the ones we want to resuscitate and manage and then uh, do an endoscopy on in time. Just to uh, mention that it may not appear that they're having a massive bleed, but remember this is in over 24 hours. So you've got to be wary of those slow but consistent bleeders, which actually may be in the massive uh, blood loss group. So first things first, is this an acute bleed or is it chronic? Either way, we're going to do an assessment, but in the acute stage, you're going to want to do an A2 examination, acutely unwell patient, make sure you've got your bloods, and in particular, an FBC and a cross match. You're going to want to cite large bore cannulae, and you may even want to be thinking about the major hemorrhage protocol. And I want to know how is this patient shocked and what stage of shock they're in, and we'll go on to that in just one moment but you want to uh, adequately resuscitate this patient. So your thoughts should be going through mind, is this an upper GI source? And if so, uh, they might be having, uh, might be bleeding, uh, like vomiting blood. And we want to be changing on that, maybe changing our management slightly for investigation of how we're going to deal with this bleed. And then uh, is this a high risk patient? So those who are still bleeding, uh, those who have required transfusions and those who are uh, unstable or those who've maybe got clotting abnormalities. So you want to think about reversal for these patients, you want to think about giving blood for these patients and specifically we'd want to be doing some imaging to see if we can find the bleeding source and then this will also uh, hopefully give us an indication of the actual cause of the bleeding. But able to resuscitate these patients effectively and uh, we can then move on to thinking about investigations of what we're going to do for them and if we can we'll do this as an outpatient but for those who are more high risk we probably want to be doing this as an inpatient and be monitoring them in case they have any further bleeding. So with all patients we want to do a full, full clinical assessment make sure we've done an examination both externally and internally and make sure we've got some bloods. We want to be thinking about whether is this a colorectal cause and doing some imaging or, or and that can either be uh, via CT or via endoscopy at a certain stage 
or is this more of an anal disease and uh, thinking on the lines of this is uh, a hemorrhoid or an anal fissure. So we're going to talk a bit about hypervolemic shock, uh, which can happen in PR bleeding. So the first stage is where we've lost uh, under 15%, so just under a litre of blood, which is still a fair amount, but the body is generally able to compensate for that. So our hemodynamic parameters are fairly stable. Moving on to stage two, so we've lost over uh, roughly a litre of blood, and this is when patients start to come tachycardic, tachypneic, uh, the capillary refill time will be prolonged, so it's going to be longer than two to three seconds. The blood pressure may not drop below 100, however, they'll have a decreased pulse pressure. So uh, specifically for those who are hypertensive, they've dropped their blood pressure to about 100, uh, just over 100, 110, you'll be thinking, is this the case? And the first real signs are that patient's uh, respirate goes up, maybe anxious, and there'll be a slight decrease in urine output. And then we're moving on to stage three. So if we're losing over one and a half liters of blood, then you're, you start to get very tachycardic, increasing uh, prolongation of capillary full time. This is where you'll start to see uh, a lower blood pressure. So it dips below 100 systolic, and then you get very tachy, tachypneic, and as well as you might get confused and agitated patients. And then moving into stage four. So these are patients who you really want to be uh, giving some blood to. Uh, losing over two liters of blood, two liters of their volume already. So this is where all their parameters uh, have gone off, and you can see that they're very hypertensive, tachypneic, tachycardic, and their GCS has dropped with minimal urine output. So thank you very much for listening. These are the references. My name's Dr. Chris Lewis Lloyd, and I hope you enjoyed this presentation.